Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video looking at how to use eCalc. Now I have done a number of videos with the gentleman behind this fantastic website, a gentleman called Marcus Muller, who has probably forgotten more about motor and prop and electrical systems on radio control aircraft than I will ever know. If you want to know more about optimizing props for efficiency or for endurance or for static thrust or some of the rules of thumb and how to use the website there is that link to that series and i'm going to put that down below so you can check it out now for those of you that have been watching my channel for a little bit you know that i've been playing with my tbs Chapito, trying to find an equivalent two-bladed prop to the three-bladed one that came supplied that's going to give me an equivalent level of performance but with less noise and hopefully slightly higher efficiency and it's one of those things that i've been doing kind of iteratively because i don't do it very often like this because most of the time the props that come on it are kind of perfect out of the box for the kind of model that's all been tested before it was sent however of course with the chapito is it has been designed really for 6s ripping around the sky and the props have been chosen for that use and i want to use it on 4s in a slightly different style of flying now, I asked my Patreon community, and keep them up to date on the adventures with the Chapito, if they'd been interested in me showing how I'm using eCalc, because I keep talking about it, but I haven't actually shown it, to try and figure out what prop I should be trying next in the setup. And this is, at the time of recording, a big shout out to John, John, Lee, and Steve, who all replied very quickly to say, yes, please, show us how to do it. So John, John, Lee, and Steve, if you're interested in eCal, do check out that motor and prop series link below. They will teach you how to use the full bits and pieces properly. But I'm going to go through this and just show you how I do it. Now, eCalc itself has an awful lot of different things. Uh, the setup finder, prop calc, loads of different stuff. The free version that's available doesn't have every prop and every motor in, but you can usually make it work or approximate the setup that you have. I have an account, uh, so big shout out to Marcus for that. Again, you can just sign up for it. It isn't free, but the cost of getting your setup wrong once will easily pay for the eCalc stuff. So it's a worthwhile thing doing rather than do that iterative thing about, oh, I'll try another motor. Maybe the KV needs to change. So what I've been doing to play with all of my stuff is going into the airplane prop finder and going through some stuff. So what I've done here is um, approximated the model weight. We don't need to get too massively interested in this stuff, just kind of approximate stuff because I'm not really interested in the final bits and pieces, but it helps the closer it is, the more accurate everything's going to be. We'll set the battery cell type, um, sort of about 1600. It's a 4S battery that I'm using here, single cell. Controller, we don't need to worry too much about that. I'll just stick a regular 50 amper in. Motor, now the motor on the Chapito I don't think is in here. However, we can search and by clicking the search button, this pops up and we can search for particular manufacturers. You can see there's an awful lot of manufacturers in here. Uh, we can search for the weight, the KV, whatever. Now I know the supplied motor on the Chapito at the moment is the 2000. So if I search for all the 2000 KV motors, here they all are in the database. What I'm just going to do is kind of flick down until I find one, something, something like that, 2308 2000. That's ish similar specs to the one that's on the model. So if you click the arrow here, it's going to populate everything. So there we go. That's a pretty close approximation. We need to set the propeller up. The supplied one is a five by 3.7 inch by three bladed prop and we can hit calculate and the cool thing is is all of these little indicators are in the green which means that this is a pretty valid configuration if we scroll down there'll be a couple of remarks uh, basically saying the blade is going to be stalling in uh, still air so that means for the static throw um, you're not going to get the full benefit of the prop it's going to have to be moving However, once it gets above about 15 kilometers or 9.3 miles per hour, then it should have a good bite on the air. So very quickly, it will get out of that stall condition and climb. So actually, this is not a bad setup. Now, what metrics do I use here? 
Well, the ones that I use are what's my motor maximum current. At the moment, let's call that 19 amps for the sake of argument. The static thrust is gonna be 943. And the other one I'm really looking for is what the pitch speed is. Now, why do I look at these three things? As I've talked about in other videos, the way that I see it, and this may be slightly oversimplifying it, but it does seem to work for the basic setups that I'm doing here with a fixed pix prop. The maximum current is gonna give me an idea of how aggressive the configuration is on both the ESC and the battery. The static thrust is going to give me an idea of how easy it is to launch. Be aware though that the stall thrust, because this is gonna be stalling in still air as I throw it, um, it's gonna be this, so call it 900 for the sake of argument. As soon as it's out of that stall condition, it gets over about 9.3 miles an hour, 10 miles an hour, it's going to be pushing back at almost a kilogram's worth of thrust, which is loads for a model of this weight. And the other thing I'm interested in is what's the pitch speed. Now that is the speed of the air coming out the back of the prop. Obviously we have lots of drag on the airframe and other issues that are slowing it down. So that means that the, the actual realized speed is going to be a little bit less. In the testing that I did here in this setup, I actually found that my model, once uh, you had all of the drag from the actual airframe, was about 72 miles an hour. So what I'm interested in is I want to have about 19 amps or less, about 950 grams of thrust would be lovely because I can launch it at that. And I would like ideally the pitch speed to go up a little bit. Now my idea initially was to go to a six by four inch prop and to drop a blade and say calculate. And what this does is my amp draw goes up quite a chunk. So it's gone from 19 to 26.2. My static thrust has jumped considerably to 1.2. Uh, it's not it's not stalling anymore because um, of the configuration of the, of the prop. Uh, the other thing, um, the speed is not a million miles away from what it was before. And what I found when I flew it is that absolutely there was an awful lot of static thrust, which was handy, but I had a kind of an issue with the excessive current that was being pulled, even in a normal flight. Now you can come down here a little bit further. You can see what the throttle percentages are gonna give you in terms of the, the current. Again, this is kind of plus and minus 10% uh, is typically the, the kind of range, but you can see here that the efficiency is kind of shown. Um, then you've also got things like the actual thrust. I don't worry too much about this, actually. I found that you can get a little bit carried away. I tend to try and keep it relatively simple, looking at current, static thrust, and pitch speed. So actually, tell you what, let's just go back just out of interest. Let me just show you what happens when you take a blade off a prop. So uh, this is what the original setup was, okay? So 19 amps, 950 grams, 85 miles an hour. If we just take off a prop and calculate it again, the amp draw drops. Well, yep, it's going to, uh, we lost prop area but by the fact we've lost a blade. The static thrust drops by 50, 60 grams and the speed actually goes up a little bit. So this is not bad, actually. What I'd like to do though is what can I do to change on this to get to where I need to be? Now I had, if you remember, the six by, it was actually a 4.2 inch prop was on there. That's what I did my last lot of testing here. Uh, the current has gone up nine amps ish. The static thrust is terrific. It will climb like a homesick angel. Uh, the speed is really nice as well. This looks okay. But again, it's that current that I've got a problem with. It needs to be more efficient. So what I did was my next test. I actually cut half an inch off the prop and we test it again. That's brought the current down. The static thrust is still about 100 grams more than it was on the three-bladed prop, which is good. 
Uh, we have a, a little bit of a stall condition, needs to get over 25.5 miles an hour for us to get all of that additional thrust. But the speed has jumped up to 94 miles an hour. So this is, this is we're, we're kind of homing in on something that looks a bit better. I like the fact that the speed has gone up. I like the fact that the current is coming down. And I like the fact that the static thrust is roughly where it was before. I can deal with that if I'm at a high auto launch motor launch number. So I would normally launch at like 1900 or 1950. So it's quite an aggressive launch. So I came back in here after actually flying this and I, I loved this setup. I thought this was really good, but still a little bit more amp draw than I would like. So I kind of kept playing with the numbers in here. Just again, this is the cool thing about eCalc. And when I put in 5.2 inches, which is just a little bit more on the two bladed prop, um, a little bit more diameter than the three bladed, look at what's happened. We're back to below 19 amps. So where it was almost 19, we're now 18 and a half. So that's actually brilliant, we're happier with that. Static thrust is almost exactly where it was before. Uh, there is going to be a stall situation, so we are going to have to give it a good chuck to get it into the air, but that's that's fine. I can deal with that. 7.62 is still going to be enough, and we have a much higher speed. So actually, from the testing here, and again, I'm recording this before I've actually taken the prop out. What I've done is I've clipped the prop, uh, clipped the ends off the prop, so that it's now a 5.2 by 4.2 pitch propeller at the back of my Gepito is going to hopefully run at or just below the current that the three bladed prop had. It's going to give me about the same static thrust, but I need to be cautious of the fact that when it's in still air, I'm going to lose some of that. So I'm going to have to give it a pretty good shove into the air once it accelerates above 32.9 miles an hour, which it'll do probably within a second, um, it'll be fine. But the really nice thing is I'm getting a really nice speed. And actually from some of the testing I've done, um, getting about 92 miles an hour out of that kind of prop actually on the plane. So this is where I'm going to do my next lot of tests. I'm gonna try a 5.2 by a 4.2 inch blade. Again, the funky thing is if I just drop that 0.2 of an inch and sometimes a small amount will make a big difference. We calculate that again. You can see here that although my current drops an awful lot, I, I kind of lose um, a chunk of static thrust, but my pitch speed goes up. I could absolutely end up with a five by 4.2 inch prop, but I kind of like the idea that with an extra, just a 0.2 of an inch on the prop, we're actually bringing the static thrust up, which is something that I definitely want because I've had a couple of um, dodgy launches that were more due to me having the auto launch throttle too low than it actually being a problem with the prop itself. Um, I like that. I like the fact that this feels very similar in terms of all the stats and numbers to the original five by 3.7 by three bladed prop, which actually comes with a model. The numbers are looking very similar with the exception of the pitch speed going up a little bit because of course we have more pitch on the blades. So John, John, Lee and Steve, that's the kind of things that I will sit here and play around with. Again, eCalc is one of those fantastic little tools that I love to play with. In reality, with the different prop designs and things, I'm using some generic setups here. I might find it slightly different, but this is a cool way for me to just mess around and just see whether or not I can stumble on the right configuration that's going to give me, in comparison with the supplied prop, the right characteristics changing in the right way that's going to work for me and the way I want to fly that model. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.